Hi guys, welcome to another episode of An Atheist Asks, where an atheist, that would be me, asks very pointed but pointless questions about Christianity and other faith-based things that I find interesting. The original idea for this week's episode was going to be, Dude, Where's the Messiah? And it was going to put the Gospels up against Google Maps to look at the different paths that Jesus took while he was wandering around during his lifetime, but there was a video that I saw having to do with atheists being moral, and I followed this sort of train of videos and trying to get a, an answer to the question. I went ahead and looked at three different apologists who talked about atheism and morality, and I've also looked at some atheist videos on atheism and morality. And I want to, instead of just saying in one video, can atheists be moral, actually when I looked at the videos it's pretty obvious. Both people of faith and atheists agree that atheists can be moral. So I wanted to take the discussion a little bit farther than that and go more into the Christian apologetics idea to understand where it was that they were coming from. In the videos that you'll watch, you'll see that there are three basic points that the Christian men in the videos are making. One, they all agree that atheists can be moral. They can behave quite morally, that they can, you know, that they're not running around killing people. The idea that somehow you can't be a moral person and be an atheist, they don't even try to defend. And of course, atheists will say, of course I'm being a moral person. You know me, look at me, I'm, I'm a moral person. That's not really where the, the conversation from the Christian side ends though. I think a lot of times the uh, discussion from atheists ends there. Yes, we can be moral people. We know right from wrong. The thing that Christians will say, and this becomes a discussion usually in more philosophical videos, is the idea that there is an objective morality that exists that Christians or people who will believe in God somehow have access to, and that this objective morality gives them therefore a superior moral outlook because they aren't using human-based values to decide what's wrong. They're using a better, higher authority that's not human. Uh, the other thing that they say, which is a little bit of a contradiction, they admit that atheists can be good people, and the apologists also admit that atheists deny God. Well, then they have the problem. How is it that you can still be a good person if you deny God? And the way they get around this, which is bullshit, they say, well, the law of God is written on the hearts of atheists. So even though they don't know good and evil, they don't know, um, they know right from wrong, even though they don't know God, they still have the benefits of having moral sensibilities, even though they don't know God. Not really sure how laws are written on our hearts, but okay. So that's the basic, the three points. Atheists can be moral. The problem for atheists is not that they can't be moral, but that they have no, nothing other than their own subjective moral out morality to decide what is moral. And even though they don't have objective morality and they're using their subjective perspectives to decide what is moral, those subjective perspectives are informed by the objective morality that God has put on their hearts, I guess. Is that what they're saying? Anyway, uh, there's a guy on YouTube. I'll put his video on. I'll intersperse it with my discussion so you can kind of keep up and see where he's coming from and where I'm coming from. He kind of starts out by saying that because 95% of people agree that murder is wrong or that 95% of people agree that murdering or harming a child is wrong, that that shows that we all have access to some kind of objective view of morality or of murder or of harming a child. When I look at different people's beliefs around the world, it seems that, gosh, like 95% agree murder is wrong. Mm. Abusing a child is wrong. So you say that 95% of people think that murder is wrong or that harming a child is wrong, but if it was objectively true, wouldn't it be 100%? So the idea that 95% suddenly gets you to objective reality, uh, eh, got some problems with that. The other question is, what is murder, right? Because if you want to say that murder is one person killing another person, and we're saying that that's objectively wrong because everybody agrees on it, well, not really. I mean, there's a lot of exceptions. Self-defense is a pretty good exception. Uh, being in war and having to defend your homeland. It seems kind of weird to just say murder is objectively wrong when there are clearly a lot of times when we say it's not wrong. That, I think, 
is a bit of a problem. Right. It's like we're playing in this orchestra and we're all reading off the same sheet music right. around the world. Right. I think that clearly points to us to the fact that there's a conscience that human beings possess. Uh -huh. A conscience meaning by that a moral indicator that we have within us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, I think it's obvious that our moral indicators insist there's objective morality. Uh -huh. My experience of life is certain things are really right and other things are really, really wrong. Right. And I would argue that's moral experience. And I'm not entirely sure what a real moral thing is or a, a moral experience. I mean, if he's saying that it's a moral experience, isn't experience what, it, it's, it's not coming from God. It's, it's an experience. We're observing it. We're experiencing it. We're learning. That doesn't seem to me to be objective morality if we're calling it moral experience. Now, if that's true, that some things are really truly right and other things are really truly wrong, there's got to be some moral lawgiver. Now, he hasn't actually established that things are truly right and truly wrong. He conceded that 95% of people say that murder is wrong. Because when we say that something is objectively wrong, we're saying it's real. Mm -hmm. Well, this is physically real. My sense experience tells me this is here, this is real. Right. But see, my conscience tells me that this intangible value, not material, this intangible value of justice is real. How do we all get to the idea that murder is wrong? There's a really simple answer to this, the ability to observe the consequences of murder. I mean, he's putting murder in this really special category or harming a child because they are moral observations, moral tr uh, things that lead us to a concept like justice. But if you think about human history, there are a lot of things that human societies came up with independently. Mathematics, astronomy, navigation, farming, uh, architecture, I mean, all of these things demonstrate that human beings had pretty consistent experiences because the universe that they are occupying behaves in a, in a similar way. But we don't consider God the source of knowledge for agriculture. We don't consider God the source of knowledge for navigation or for astronomy. So why would it be the case for a concept like justice and not something as, as abstract as looking at the pattern of the stars in the sky and matching that to the seasons? Now, in order to have an intangible value of justice, you have to have a mind. Inanimate matter has no ability to understand an intangible value of justice. You've got to have a thinking mind. Right. So, if there is no God, i.e. no mind prior to the human mind, then it's obviously this mind and that mind and that mind that define what's right and wrong. Right. Which means it's relative depending upon... And not objective. Exactly. Oh, okay. What he refers to is the process of mind, and minds are dependent upon experience and taking in information and processing information. And if he is saying that we are getting our morality through our experience, then I don't see how he can make a claim that people are getting their objective morality through experience. Right? Because atheists and, and theists alike are getting their information and making uh, the basis of their moral judgments from their experiences. Christians don't claim a separate, special moral experience that I'm aware of. They're not saying there are questions that cannot be answered just by using human reasoning. There are some moral questions that we can only answer by appealing to God. I'm saying every atheist loves. Every atheist, I'm convinced, understands their moral objectives. Right. What I'm saying is, if love is real, uh -huh. and if objective mor morals are real, it means there's got to be a God. There's got to be someone beyond matter and energy who creates and defines those intangible values. I can't think of a single moral question that Christ, Christ, Christians can present as saying, here is the moral answer to this question, and it is based in God, and there is no other way to access this. If there was, if there was some way, some moral question that we could not reason about or experience or use different tools of, of logic or rationality to put together an answer that would be satisfactory, okay, and then I would believe you. But I don't see any evidence of this separate existence of an objective morality. Um, it's certainly not one written in the Bible, 
because there are lots of things that are absolutely horrific. So I don't think that this is an appeal to the Bible, and I want to be fair. I think this is an appeal to God and, and an experience of God. I just don't see where this experience happens for Christians, and I'll limit it to Christians because this is who is addressing me uh, as an atheist. I don't see where that special interaction happens. I just see Christians going around doing the same kinds of calculations I'm doing. So please, if you have evidence of this special experience of a real moral truth, I would like to know what that's like. I, I would like to hear independent accounts of how you access a moral truth that is beyond sensory experience. I just don't see any evidence that that happens. So let's, let's do a case study. Let's present what I will call the Margaret Beaufort challenge. Margaret Beaufort, who was the mother of Henry VII, who was the father of Henry VIII, was married at the age of 12, which was the age of consent provided in her time period. Even in Margaret's time, getting married at the age of 12, there was often a waiting period. You know, the kids might be 14 or 16 before they actually have sex because they realize that when you get a 12-year-old pregnant, that's pretty dangerous. Um, she can die and the baby will die. But the man that, to whom she was wed was not interested in, in waiting. He wanted an heir to secure his fortune. And he had sex with her, demanded his marital rights, however you want to put it, raped her um, at the age of 12. And they had sex repeatedly until she became pregnant. And then shortly after, um, I think within a few months of their getting married, he went off to war and was killed and she was left alone to deliver a baby at about the age of 13. Here's my question for those who assert that there is an objective morality and that harming a child is objectively wrong and that sex within marriage is objectively right. Was what happened to Margaret Beaufort objectively moral? I know from my secular feminist modern worldview, there's a very easy answer to what happened to Margaret Beaufort. This is my Margaret Beaufort challenge to people who hold that there is objective morality and that we can know it. Please give me your objective morality that leads me to your conclusion that Margaret Beaufort's marriage and what happened to her was either moral or immoral. Thanks. I want to get into this a little bit more because I'm kind of fascinated by this notion of being a moral person without God. I'm going to be starting as part of my An Atheist series, just examples of how I can get to a moral conclusion without using God. I'll probably start with the big ones like murder and lying and, and stuff like that. But if you want to know what it's like to be someone who does not make a reference at all to God and yet still be able to come to a moral conclusion, then maybe you'll find that series interesting. That about wraps it up for me. This has been An Atheist Asks. Thanks for watching.